introduction to my next guest. Her name is Lori Williams. We're kindred spirits in that we've been around this game of dog training a long time, the two of us. Lori is a professional uh, canine educator, behavior counselor, trainer, writer. She owns Pup and Iron. I love that because I'm a gym rat. Pup and Iron. And I got to ask Lori if that relates to being a gym rat. Canine Fitness in Learning Center in Virginia. And she's a AKC judge, a canine good citizen evaluator. And she is hosts a podcast on dog sports on Pet Life Radio, contributing editor to APDT Chronicles, and also on the board for the Dog Writers Association of America. So, Lori, what a resume! I look real good on paper. Let's That's say. amazing. <laughs> Lori is on social media and canine diva is her name on TikTok. Is that where you, you're on Instagram as well? Yes. The canine diva. And, um, canine. and I love the conversations. She says it as it is. So it's, I think when you get to a place in life, it's okay to do that. <laughs> and Lori, I wanted to talk about, because we've been doing this for so long, the two of us yeah. about, Starting out, so if you're a young person starting out, and you might not even know you want to be a professional dog trainer, mm -hmm. but somewhere in the back of your mind, wouldn't that be nice? What do you see as like qualities as a person rather than a dog trainer that would lead to somebody being able to be good as a dog trainer or mm -hmm. have it as a an actual career? But you know what the thing is, is the way people need to come up now yeah. is completely different than mm, how I did that. Now, I, I don't know about you, but um, like I came up through the kettle clubs when I first started dog training um, via signing my Irish setter up for a class at the local community center that was run by the local community, um, excuse me, kennel club. It was Jacksonville, North Carolina. Kennel wow. club. So um I just, and I was super young, had a very biddable dog that caught on like this, but then they took me under their wing because they saw something in me. They said, this girl has got it. So, I mean, this was back in the uh, early 1980s. So they, I just hung around and hung around and learned mostly from women. It was mostly mm. women, kennel club members completely different training. Of course, it was in the 80s. I mean, truly, it would be uh, categorized as compulsion um, mm -hmm. in today's terms. Because, um, you know, a choke chain was standard equipment with um, yep. when you signed up for a dog training 12 class. weeks old, 12 weeks old in 1988, when I got my yeah. puppy got her choke chain. Absolutely. That's the way it was. We didn't know any better back then. But anyway, um, I just hung around and hung around and they allowed me to hang around. And here I was, <laughs> I was 21 years old with a infant and toddler at home, leaving oh, wow. my husband and my babies at home. And I would, after the kennel club class, I would go with them. They'd let me go to this little like diner. And sometimes I would stay there to like midnight one in the morning just talking dogs yeah. so there's that's not the way things are done anymore so it's a whole different route now right today I think still it you need to start with your own dog I'm very um adamant about that you need to because I get a lot of people who actually want to be dog trainers and don't have a dog I'm like you have get a dog start mm. taking classes yeah as many as you can um, become like a gym rat, but with dog training. Keep is that where that out. came from? Were you a gym rat? <laughs> yeah, it is. I used to be in fitness. I Before I had um, dog training was my Perfect. primary occupation. I was a fitness director, managed gyms. And I said to uh, everybody in the gym, I vowed that I am going to have a dog gym one day. And they laughed. Oh, I said, I'm going to call it up and iron. I'm telling you. And they laughed, but <laughs> I got the last laugh. So yes, that is there the reference go. for sure. But um, yeah, you got to hang around. You got to learn as much as you can. You got to train your own dog and maybe train your second dog and mm -hmm. um, hang around as much as you can. Find a mentor. But what do you think, Lori, their personal characteristics oh, need to be? Okay. 
good. Yeah, that's very important because also a lot of people come to me and say, well, I want to be a dog trainer. I love dogs. They express their love of dogs. They're like, people not so much, but I love dogs. I said, guess what? You need to like people. You need to be able to build a rapport with people and it needs to be authentic and you need to be sincere about it. So uh, actually dog training, unless you are happen, you happen to find a job that you have no contact with people, that you're only training hands-on with dogs, this might not be for you because we are training people by and large, or at least that's what I feel we should be doing. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because if we can't train the other end of the leash, if we can't show them how to build a relationship with their own dog, how to execute with their own dog, the skills and learn the techniques and the dog is, is not going to be okay because we have to eventually, even if you do board and trains, eventually you have to give that dog back to them uh, and they need to be prepared. So I tell them you have to be a people person um, or at least figure out a way to fake it as authentically as you can. And I don't really know that you can fake it. I think the um, one of the reasons we might still be in this is because we probably, we like people and we yeah. like teaching people. And for me, that was, an, I liked, I liked people, but I only liked my people. And <laughs> I, and when I would see somebody, when I would be, I, no, there is another problem with me in that I was teaching people as a world champion. So I right. was given instant authority and instant respect. And I think right. respect really should be earned. But I, yeah. you're given this instant respect. So of course, you're, it's your ego. Like it will pad yeah. your ego. So yeah. I knew I could help anybody train their dog. But yeah. if I saw somebody being mean to their dog, like correcting them or I, one girl stomping on her dog's foot when it wouldn't go into a down when she asked, like I would go all spotter monkey on their ass and I would make them feel bad about themselves. And then they'd get in their back brain and they couldn't learn a thing from me. Yeah, and so yeah, that was yeah. my big evolution is yeah, yeah. you got to love people. And if you yeah. love people, then you're going to recognize they're doing the best they can. So right. they're stomping Absolutely. on the dog's foot. Somebody taught them that. Right. Like, right. right. Breaking, so breaking old habits is probably one of the biggest challenges. I think we talked about this before where some of our, like some of our best uh, students have been novices, complete novices. I have so yeah. many people who, it is their first dog. And I'm like, ah, oh, thank you. Because yeah. they are <laughs> they are a clean slate. They're like a sponge. Um, they're, they're going to everything. accept the program that you're telling them. They're going to accept it right from the beginning and follow it step by step. They're going to trust the process as mm -hmm. opposed to, well, I used to do it this way. And then also some people just have knee-jerk reactions. The pop, the pop of the leash. Yeah. They've been doing that their whole lives. So coming to yep. me where I'm saying to them, now listen. So I I definitely um, have a way to finesse that. Um, I can't necessarily, I mean, definitely it, I, it improved through time, but actually when I was in um, college, I actually majored in communication. Um, oh. So I took a lot of interpersonal communication classes. Oh, you got a leg up, girl. Yeah, Come on. I did. <laughs> I did. And so, I mean, being able to build a rapport with people and, I went to the University of Hard Knocks to learn my rapport. I got to tell you that much. <laughs> you know what? So, you know what? Here's a, this is something that's very interesting. And I'll ask you this question. Now, dog sport people, you can do that too. Like mm -hmm. me, um, when I started learning through the kennel club system, I said, well, I want to compete because I stayed after and watched them doing um, their dog obedience. They were, a show was coming, a trial was coming, an obedience trial. And I watched them doing utility and I was like, oh my God, I need to do this. Um, so what they were the most, they browbeat the heck out of me, but I yeah. didn't care because I wanted it. I was, I yeah. enabled them to do it. The clients that I have today, <laughs> the clients that I have, they cannot be browbeaten. Like yeah. regular everyday average pet owners, which is the majority of what I teach. Um, mm -hmm. That and they, and they not do now be, for sure. Yeah, but no, you're 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 right. Like uh, I think when I look at how I taught back in the early '90s, it was and and through most of the '90s, because I was tired and overworked because I was on the road 200 days a year, either right. teacher and competing, and and I didn't 
And literally I was, I had to be shaped by the response of the people. And when I right. knew I'd lost them, I knew I couldn't help them with their dog and that broke yeah. my heart. And yeah. so, yeah, it was, it was an, a, a, an evolution for me. And, yeah. and it was through training dogs and shaping behavior that I learned. I actually like working with people. Yeah. <laughs> I actually like people. And so, no, the sport people, they'll put up with your bullshit yeah. because and they, will. they yeah. right. Because they want to know what, you know, Right. But the pet right. people say, I go down the road. Absolutely. Yeah, and, yeah, and they're, that, not, I mean, they're not going to put up with it. I had to be as focused on becoming a good educator as I had become focused Absolutely. on being a good dog trainer. That Absolutely. was my my education for sure. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's it. That. That's the key. And I do think that's the key to longevity, because mm. if you I mean, if you really like have a disdain for people. First of all, it shows like you can't hide it. Like I see, I see it on social media. I see a lot of trainers on like TikTok, is, especially. Yeah. I'm like, do you even like people? Like, <laughs> I think not, but no. um, and it shows. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah. And, uh, and people think it's funny when they wear these shirts, like the more people I meet, the more oh, I love yeah. my dog, but, but right. you're rehearsing for your subconscious. If you really want to be with, you know, teaching people, then you've got to help them. You've got to help right. them understand what you understand. And, right. and sometimes, so let's talk about the, the young trainers on social media then. Mm -hmm. And um, there's more and more of them. And I think it's great mm -hmm. um, because it's tough because you're in, you're in a goldfish bowl, but right. if you could, you know, get them all in a room and, and give them like a couple of pieces of advice. What would you like to say to the young people that are on social media trying to train in front of the world and, you know, um, share. All right. So the, the Broadway musical Hamilton, there's a line in it where uh, Alexander Hamilton was telling Aaron Burr. No, Aaron Burr was telling a Alexander Hamilton, uh, talk less, smile more. Now, I don't mm. like that, but what I do like is talk less, train more. Mm -hmm. And I think there should be a lot less talking about things that you may not know as much as you think you do. You might know mm. a little, okay? You know that saying, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Yeah. You know a little, but train more, improve your skills more, train more. Learn mm -hmm. more before you speak get better with your skills. It. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and especially before I, you get on soapboxes about it. Yes, because I see, I do see a lot of people, and they mean well, that are speaking about things, and they're being asked questions that I know they really don't have an answer to, and if they mm -hmm. hadn't started the fight to begin with they wouldn't have been backed in a corner. So I do see, mm. unfortunately, quite a few people looking a little foolish and walking right into it because they spoke on things that they may not know. I really don't think that the answer is us necessarily always saying, well, this person's doing it wrong and here's why. This person's doing it wrong and here's why. Show what you're doing, that's right. Yeah. And talk about what is correct and talk about what worked for you and talk about what worked for your clients. And um, I just think that is more the way that I would love to see the face of positive reinforcement mm -hmm. on social media. But unfortunately, quite a bit of it is uh, trainers coming on and, you know, tagging people that are doing it wrong, showing clips that are the wrong or in their mind the wrong way. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's just, uh, I don't. Yeah, I, especially I, if you're trying to be, or if you're saying you're force-free trainer, like I always say that I want people to be able to see who the reinforcement-based trainers are right. by the way they treat other people, but by the way they, they talk to them in, in a chat or comment on their video that right. it's clear, you know, who they are because it's clear what their beliefs are about learning. And I think though, it also, your line about train, speak less and train more is also for those people teaching in person, because I see that with a lot of young people who are teaching classes, they talk forever. And these poor dogs are sitting against the wall and right. not doing anything. And they get out and then the dogs start biting on their leash or rolling on their back. And yeah, 
give you know give instruction at first we're in social we're, we're in the era of computers so right. give them their you know this is what we're going to work on for the first five minutes and get right. the dogs out there doing stuff right. so i think Absolutely. that that comment could be used for people on social media and for people in real life yes. hey, you have like 500 students a year go through your school so yes. what is the biggest stumbling block for getting the the information from their heads down to the leash what do you think that is Huh, that's a good question. So here's the thing. This is another thing. And I think we sh should, could maybe talk about this a little bit. Um, the average student will stay for eight weeks. Wow. That's On the average. Okay. Absolutely. Wow. And then I would say, so you, so say if you get a hundred people that are all starting at a certain time, mm -hmm. they'll that, like maybe... 80% will do eight weeks. That's really all the average everyday dog right. owner is willing to give. I know it's, yeah, it's eight weeks. That's about it. So you got to make those eight weeks so packed full of information. Mm -hmm. Now I have something called, um, I do a levels program. So uh, dogs all start in level one and then there's a puppy level one. If right. They're younger than six months, but they start in level one and then they progress through the levels, but each level is offered three times a week. So if you sign up for classes at my um, facility, you can come three times a week. It's all for the same price. You can oh, come wow. three, yeah, three times so a week. they can get their training in, in a classroom. They can get the their training in. I changed to this levels program, I think about 10 years ago, because one summer I said, you know, try something. I did a program. It was called Total Dog. And mm -hmm. I offered it three times a week. One day, the first day we did, uh, one of the days we did obedience and manners. One day we did um, intro to dog sports. And then the last day we did um, probably just mostly impulse control exercises, one after the other. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we did, had the th three different things. I did that just for a summer and I had people sign up for it. The progress those dogs made ah, was incredible. That's it cool. was night and day. And I, and it was because they paid a certain price. So they were going to make sure they came all three days and it was only wow. for the summer. So these people trained so much and so, and not hard. They just trained smart and they kept coming. It's kind of the same concept with um, when you send your child to school. They mm -hmm. don't go to school. Well, like, what if ki kids just went once a week <laughs> to school? I mean, they would love that. Parents they would love community. it. Absolutely, they would for sure. I like but that. Anyway. That's outside the box thinking about education, Lori. That's a that's yeah. a great well, idea. Well, and I'm not I'm not the creator of the levels. I, there were other places that were doing it before me around the country, and I was reading about it, and I was kind of like, but but. And here's the thing too with the levels is, it's open enrollment, so people are coming going all the time. So you might have one person in that came in that night and is starting. You'll have another person that's on their oh, wow. third week. Another, so you had to become a multitasking instructor yeah. like nobody's business. So boy, did that um, that made me a better trainer and everybody who works with me a better trainer. And I had some trainers who could not do it. Their brain couldn't yeah. work in that way. And I what? get it. When so, you get like a lot of people on one day and a, not so many people it, on another it kind day. Of, it kind of is, but it kind of um, evens out, which is weird because I, I had a, so many fears before I started. Um, I thought that 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 was going to happen. Like we're going to have like 25 people on Monday and nobody on Wednesday. Believe it or not, that did not happen. Um, there were times when we just got uh, extra, like the class just got big. And I had to add more more time slots, but it never got to where I couldn't handle it. Let me tell you what, this is really kind of funny. When I first switched, people actually called and said, because I was in a panic before I switched. I was like, people don't know, I don't know if people are going to want this. Right. I had people call and they said, you know, oh, they asked questions, you know, and, and so um, how much does it cost and blah, blah, blah. And then I said, yeah, and, and you can come three times a week. <laughs> And I actually had probably about a good many people that said three times a week. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Like they did not. The prospect of having to come three times a week made right. them completely retreat. I can't do that. That's 
crazy. Isn't that mind blowing? But but listen, Susan, I yeah, I was scared then. I was like, uh, I don't know if people are going to and and it did drop momentarily. The registrations kind of dipped for a second, and I said, I'm going to hold steadfast because you know what? Maybe those people that are are intimidated by coming three times a week or don't want that. Yeah. Maybe that's not the person I want. Maybe mm-hmm. I need to hold on because the people who want more training are out right. there. And yeah. Right. And I, yeah. So now this is what, now I get people calling and say three times a week. What? And I don't have to pay more. That's I get true. all that. Yeah. So that's the person I, I got finally reached the person that I wanted anyway. Yeah. And, um, and now it's just going it's so fabulous. And that's yeah. what you that's what you want. You know, when we started our online classes in 2008 and I said there's like millions of people around the world that have dogs that could afford our class, but right. we don't want them all. We right. want the people who are our people. Right? right? right. So there'll be right. people that are listening to this conversation. A lot of people just want free stuff and they're happy like going around and taking little bits and yeah, bits and, and pieces and, mm-hmm. and, and, and never really getting that kind of relationship with their dog that they could, if they would yeah. invest in themselves. Right. So, you know, it's, it's okay as a dog trainer to, I, I think it's fabulous that you stuck with it. No, oh, yeah. the, people I'm <laughs> the value in getting a chance to get mentored training three times a week. Those yeah. are the people that I want because they think, more they they expect more of themselves and they don't they have lower expectations of their dog absolutely if they come more often they're going to see the progress absolutely. they're going to it's it's absolutely lori this has been fantastic thank you um i love thank your you. the, the insight of what you're doing in the in, in person classes please keep on sharing your positivity and your outlooks on social media. You're a blessing to everybody that's training dogs and everybody that owns a dog. So if you haven't followed Lori, jump over to canine diva and uh, thank you for being with us tonight. All right. Thank you, Susan. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.